Hello and welcome everybody. This is Jörg Lissmann from YouTube channel Joggler66 and this evening I'm going to do another reading, chapter 3 of the book Babylon Mystery Religion. I know it's been quite some time since I've been doing this but you have to understand that I had some personal issues and also a lot of work to do at the end time of the year as a wine salesman. This is my the best period that I can uh, try to earn some money to make it through this antichrist system world that we live in, where I still have to pill, uh, bill my bill, yeah, still have to pay my bills. <laughs> I'm sorry. And also, my mother was in the hospital the last 14 days, so she's out now. And I want to thank everybody who prayed for her recovery, and that kind of worked. I also have to do another reading of Rulers of Evil already since a long time. Chapter 19 is waiting and uh, yeah, a lot of things to do and so little time to do them, right? The day has only 24 hours. So today I'm going to read Chapter 3 of Babylon Mystery Religion and that chapter is called Merry Worship, Masqueraded S-U-N Sun Worship. Perhaps the most outstanding proof that Mary worship developed out of the old worship of the S-U-N sun worship mother goddess may be seen from the fact that in sun worship religion the mother was worshipped as much or more than her son. This provides an outstanding clue to help us solve the mystery of S-U-N sun worship today. True Christianity teaches that the Lord Jesus and he alone is the way the truth and the life, that only he can forgive sin, that only he of all earth's creatures has ever lived a life that was never stained with sin, and he is to be worshipped, not his mother. But Roman Catholicism, showing the influence that S.U.N. Sun worship has had in its development, in many ways exalts the mother also, and even, of course, and that's the book all about, the mother even above the sun. One can travel the world over, and whether in a massive cathedral or in a village chapel, the statue of Mary will occupy a prominent position. In reciting the rosary, the Hail Mary is repeated nine times as often as the Lord's Prayer. Catholics are taught that by praying to Mary, she can take the petition to her son, Jesus, and since she is his mother, he will answer the request for her sake. The inference is that Mary is more compassionate, more understanding and merciful than her son Jesus. Certainly this is contrary to the scriptures. Yet this idea has often been repeated in Catholic writings. One noted Roman Catholic writer, Alphonsus Liguori, wrote at length telling how much more effectual prayers are that are addressed to Mary rather than to Christ. Liguori, incidentally, was canonized as a saint by Pope Gregory XIV in 1839 and was declared a doctor of the Catholic Church by Pope Pius IX. In one portion of his writings, he described an imaginary scene and understand an imaginary scene we are talking here about spiritual exercises what the Jesuits teach in one portion of his writings he described an imaginary scene in which a sinful man saw two ladders hanging from heaven Mary was on the top of one Jesus at the top of the other when the sinner tried to climb the one ladder he saw the angry face of Christ and fell defeated but when he climbed Mary's ladder, he ascended easily and was openly welcomed by Mary, who brought him into heaven and presented him to Christ. Then all was well. The story was supposed to show how much easier and more effective it is to go to Christ through Mary. The same writer said that the sinner who ventures to come directly to Christ may come with dread of his wrath. But if he will pray to the Virgin, she will only have to quote unquote show that son quote unquote the breasts that gave him suck and his wrath will be immediately appeased such reasoning is in direct conflict with a scriptural example 
Quote, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, unquote, a woman said to Jesus, quote, and the peps that thou hast sucked. Unquote. But Jesus answered, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. And for that we can go to Luke uh, 11, 27 and um, to, uh, to 28. I'm going to read these two chapters in the full. Luke 11, <coughs> chapters, uh, sorry, Luke chapter 11, verses 27 through 28. Quote, And it came to pass, as he, speak, as he spake of these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice, and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the peps which thou hast sucked. But he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God, and keep it. Unquote. So, here you can see that Jesus, especially in this case, did not exalt his mother. And we will only come to another. We will also come to another place in the Bible where that is more, made even more clear later on in reading this chapter. Such ideas about, about the breasts, on the on the other hand, were not foreign to the worshippers of Sun Sun worship Mother Goddess. Images of her have been unearthed, which often show her breasts extremely out of proportion to her body. In the case of Diana, to symbolize her fertility. She is pictured with as many as 100 breasts. And this is also, in my opinion at least, proof of the sexual cult the Roman Catholic Church represents. Naked breasts is definitely a sign for that fact. But that's only my opinion. You can think about it, what you think yourself. Of course, it has to symbolize fertility, but showing naked breasts, as in a lot of pictures in the Roman Catholic Church, is also a little bit of that sex cult that surrounds that satanic church. The author continues, Further attempts to exalt Mary to a glorified position within Catholicism may be seen in the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception of Mary. This doctrine was pronounced and defined by Pope Pius IX in 1854, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, quote, in the first instant of her conception was preserved exempt from all stain of original sin." Unquote. Here I have to take you to a little excursion uh, a little bit further to explain who Pope Pius IX was. Pope Pius IX, or in Italian they call him Pio Nino, Pio Nino lived between the 13th of May 1792 and the 7th of February 1878 so he got quite old. He was born as Giovanni Maria Mastai Ferretti, reigned from the 16th of June 1846 to his death in 1878. He was the longest reigning elected Pope in the history of the Catholic Church, over 31 years. During his pontificate, he convened the First Vatican Council between 1869 and 1870, which decreed papal infallibility I hope you understood that. In Vatican Council I, he decreed the Pope is infallible. It took the Roman Catholic Church from 538, when they really gained their power, until 1870, to openly decree that the Pope is infallible. And also everything that belongs to it, I have to add here, meaning the Pope is the judge of every man, but cannot be judged by any man. So he decreed the papal infallibility, but the council was cut short due to the loss of the papal states in 1870. This is also the reason for many actions the Pope took after 1870, because the papacy was robbed of its status as king of kings. The papacy was considered dead, as we can read in Revelation 13. You know, this dealing about the deadly wound. I saw one of his heads and his were wounded to death. But acting, so to say, underground, meaning out of the sight of the public. I guess that's the way that uh, the decree of infallibility didn't get much recognition at that time. Pio Nino, or Pope Pius IX, defined the dogma of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary 
meaning that Mary was conceived without original sin. Pius IX also conferred the title Our Mother of Perpetual Help on a famous Byzantine icon from Crete entrusted to the uh, Redemptorists. He was also the last pope to rule as the sovereign of the Papal States, which fell completely to the Italian army in 1870 and were incorporated into the Kingdom of Italy. After this, he was referred to, and that chiefly by himself, as quote-unquote prisoner of the Vatican. Quote, the keys to this vast prison palace were on the inside and not on the outside. Well, that's a strange prison where the prisoner has the key itself, right? As a result of losing the Papal States, no Pope left the Vatican until the Lateran Treaty of 1929 gave the papacy back its status of a nation, therefore restoring the civil power of the Roman Catholic Church and reinstallment as King of Kings. This historical moment is described in Revelation 13, as I just mentioned before, quote, And I saw one of his heads as if it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast, unquote. Ever since, we have reached that state that all the world wandered after the beast. Just look at how the whole world looked at the United States of America when the first Jesuit Pope, Francis, this year, 2015, visited the United States and spoke to a joint session of Congress and after that to an assembly of the United Nations. The whole world wandered after the beast that was history in the making. The deadly wound was first afflicted by the Reformation, which I think is the shortened period of tribulation for the elect's sake, as we can read in Matthew 24. Then by the captiv captivity of the Pope by General Berthier in 1798, and brought to completion with the fall of the Papal States in 1870, the year of Vatican I Council. By the way, any <clears throat> another interesting know about, to know about uh, Pope Pio Nino, in 1864 this Pope, Pius IX, published the Syllabus of Errors. And what that is, I will be talking about the Syllabus of Errors in another broadcast on Hour of the Truth in the future. So, probably even this year. I'll see how it goes on there. On what we have planned on Hour of the Truth, but uh, don't miss the Syllabus of Errors is a very interesting document. Okay, I'm going to read the last sentence again and continue what the writer says in Chapter 3 of Babylon Mystery Religion. This doctrine was pronounced and defined by Pope Pius IX in 1854 that the Blessed Virgin Mary, quote, in the first instant of her conception, was preserved exempt from all stain of original sin. Unquote. It would appear that this teaching is only a further effort to make Mary more closely resemble the goddess of the SUN sun worship, for in the old myths the goddess was also believed to have had a supernatural conception. The stories varied, but all told of supernatural happenings in connection with her entrance into the world that she was superior to ordinary mortals, that she was divine, little by little, so that the teachings about Mary would not appear inferior to those of the Mother Goddess, it was necessary to teach that Mary's entrance into this world involved a supernatural element also. Is the doctrine that Mary was born without the stain of original sin scriptural? Well, we will answer this in the words of the Catholic Encyclopedia itself. Words not taken from a Protestant writing, I remind you, but from the Catholic Encyclopedia itself. Quote, No direct or categorical or stringent proof of the dogma can be brought forward from Scripture. Unquote. It is pointed out, rather, that these ideas were a gradual development within the Church. And I want to add here that even Jesus on another occasion that, um, than the one mentioned before, you know, the suck of the breasts, did find her role as his mother insignificant 
as we can read in Matthew 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 46 and forth going. Quote, While he had yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him, that told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my mother and sister. My, I'm sorry. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Unquote. Here Jesus himself makes it very clear that the position of Mary was absolute everything but special. She was just the vessel that gave birth to him. And only the people that believe in God and the teaching of the Father who is in heaven are brothers and sisters among each others. Jesus made this very clear. So I would advise every Catholic to read the real King James Bible, the real Word of God, to get an understanding of that. Okay, the author continues. Right here, a basic difference, perhaps the most uh, perhaps the most basic difference between the Roman Catholic approach to Christianity and the general Protestant view should be explained. Roman Catholic doctrine has been based partly on scripture, partly on traditions and ideas handed down by church fathers, and partly on beliefs borrowed from S.U.N. sun worship, if these beliefs could be Christianized. Concepts from all of these sources have been mixed together, developed, finally to be made dogmas and various Catholic councils over the centuries. But the view that the Protestant Reformation sought to revive was a return to the actual scriptures as a more sound basis for doctrine, with little or no emphasis on the ideas that developed later. <clears throat> Again, I have to add a little comment here, you know, the Reformation movement at least in my opinion, you can discuss me on that, was wrong in its approach to reform the Roman Catholic Church. Because the Roman Catholic Church, as the synagogue of Satan, cannot be reformed in any shape or form. Instead of calling it the Reformation, we should rather address it as a movement back to scriptural, meaning biblical, Christianity, from the time before the pagan Roman Empire baptized itself with the garments of Biblical Christianity. Those are my comments and you can agree with them or you can disagree with them and you can write that in the comment below the video. Tell me what you think about it. On the other hand, the Reformation was not perfect. No reformer was perfect, no man is perfect. The Bible says, though, there is only one perfect, and that's God. There is only one holy, and that's God. And why weren't the reformers perfect? Because, also my opinion, <laughs> they did not teach the biblical Sabbath. And with them leaping, leaving that door open, you can go to our last broadcast on Hour of the Truth, episode number 37. I will bring that up and I show you the quote in the picture from the Archbishop of Reggio on session 17 on uh, the Council of Trent where he pointed out that when the Protestants say that they lean to the Bible as their authority alone, sola scriptura, as they said, there is no scriptural reference in the whole Bible to be found that places the Sabbath from Saturday, the day that God ordained, to Sunday. But the Reformers all worshipped on Sunday. And therefore, 
let the door open to get attacked and that the Roman Catholic Church could make her point and say, like the Bishop of Reggio said in the session on the Council of Trent, you are just rebels. Now, going back to the book, the author continues saying, going right to the scriptures, not only is any proof for the idea of the Immaculate Conception of Mary lacking, there is evidence to the contrary. Now he goes a little bit into what I told you before. While she was a chosen vessel of the Lord, was a godly and virtuous woman, a virgin, she was as much a human as any other member of Adam's family. Quote, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, unquote, as we can read in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. The only exception being Jesus Christ himself. Like everyone else, Mary needed a Savior and plainly admitted this when she said in Luke chapter 1, verse 47, quote, And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Unquote. If Mary needed a Savior, she couldn't have been a Savior herself. If she needed a Savior, then she also needed to be saved, forgiven and redeemed like all of us. The fact is, our Lord's divinity did not depend on his mother being a divine person. He was divine because he was the only begotten Son of God. His divinity came from his heavenly Father and not of his mother. The idea that Mary was superior to other human beings was not in the teaching of Jesus. Once someone mentioned his mother and brethren. You remember that's the point that I was making a little bit earlier in the reading here. Jesus asked, Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? Then, stretching forth his hand toward his disciples, said, quote, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Unquote. I told you already, you can read that up in Matthew chapter 12, verses 46 to 50. Plainly, anyone who does the will of God is, in a definite sense, on the same level with Mary. Each day Catholics the world over recite the male Harry and other prayers addressed to Mary. Multiplying the number of these prayers times the number of Catholics who recite them, someone has estimated that Mary would have to listen to 46,296 petitions a second. Obviously, no one but God himself could do this. Nevertheless, Catholics believe that Mary hears all of these prayers, and so, of necessity, they have to exalt her to the divine level, scriptural or not. Attempting to justify this exaltation, some have quoted the words of Gabriel to Mary, quote, Blessed art thou among women, unquote, as we can read in Luke, 1, chap uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 28. But Mary being, quote unquote, blessed among women, cannot make her a divine person. For many centuries before this, a similar blessing was pronounced upon Jael, of whom it was said, quote, Blessed above women shall Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite, be. And for that we turn to Judges, chapter 5, verse 24, quote, Blessed above women shall Jael, the wife of Heber, the Canite, be. Blessed shall, be, shall she be above women in the tent. Unquote. Now, before Pentecost, Mary gathered with other disciples waiting for the promise of the Holy Spirit. We read that the apostles, quote, all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brethren. Unquote, as we can read in Acts chapter 1, verse 14. Typical of Catholic ideas concerning Mary, the picture to the right, and this is the picture I will put here in the video, the picture attempts to give to Mary a central position. But the disciples were not looking to Mary on that occasion. They were looking to their resurrected and ascended Christ to outpour on them the gift of the Holy Spirit. In the drawing, that's following the picture in the video here, in the drawing the Holy Spirit as a dove is hovering over Mary. Yet, 
As far as the scriptural account is concerned, the only one upon whom the Spirit as a dove descended was Jesus himself, and not his mother. On the other hand, the S.U.N. sun worship virgin goddess under the name of Juno was often represented with a dove on her head, as also what was Astarte, Sibylle and Isis. Further attempts to glorify Mary may be seen in the Roman Catholic doctrine of the perpetual virginity. This is the teaching that Mary remained a virgin throughout her life. But, as Encyclopedia Britannica explains, the doctrine of the perpetual virginity of Mary was not taught until about 300 years after the ascension of Christ. It was not until the Council of Chaldean in 451 that this fabulous quality gained the official recognition of Rome. According to the scriptures, the birth of Jesus was the result of a supernatural conception, as we can read in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, without an earthly father. But after Jesus was born, Mary gave birth to other children, the natural offspring of her union with Joseph, her husband. The Bible says, Jesus was Mary's quote-unquote firstborn son, as we can read in Matthew chapter 1 verse 25. It does not say he was her only child. Being her firstborn would, could certainly infer that later she had a secondborn child, possibly a thirdborn child, etc., that such was the case seems apparent for the names of four brothers are mentioned, James, Jose, Simon and Judas. And for that we turn to Matthew chapter 13 and verses 54 and following. Quote, and when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said, Whence has this man his wisdom, and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not, this, uh, is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then has this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many works there because of their unbelief. This is the, I don't know how many is time already, that we turn to the Bible and that the Bible, the only true preserved God, word of God in the English language today, in the 1611 authorized version of King James Bible, is making it very clear that everything that is told in every denomination, and I don't say it's only Catholics today, because all the so-called quote-unquote Protestant denominations have fallen from, from their faith. They all teach another gospel. When you turn to the one true preserved word of God, the 1611 King James Bible, you will read the truth. There is just no discussion possible how in this book, I don't know, 20 or, or something times that I already read from the King James Bible, to counterfeit everything that is said in the S.U.N., in the sun worship. You know, I always say S.U.N. sun worship because it is not S.O.N. sun worship. And those sound the same but are written different and have a different meaning. When you exalt Jesus as the Son of God, then you have sun worship, but that's S.O.N. That's why I always read S.U.N. sun worship, to be clear about that. And I cannot make the point clear enough or stated often enough how important a profound knowledge of the Bible, the real Bible, the King James Bible is. If you agree or if, you're not, or if you don't agree, I mean, that's up to you. 
I do not discuss my conscience. My conscience comes from the Bible. My conscience comes from God. As Martin Luther said, to go against conscience would neither be safe nor fair. Here I stand, I can do no other. God help me. Amen. Those were Luther's words, because he referred to the Bible as his authority. I refer to the Bible as my authority. That's the word of God. That's the only truth that we have in this world, because everything else is a lie. This whole book is about telling you that everything that you think is holy and should be worshipped, that you are told by whatever congregation you belong to or whatever church you go to, Catholic, Protestant, whatever, wherever you go, you are told lies. The only truth is to be found in the Bible. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. The truth is the truth, whether you like it or not. It doesn't change. Truth is not the truth because many people like it. No, <laughs> no, actually, it's, it's the opposite. The truth is the truth, and that's why it's hated by so many people. That's why they rather choose to live a lie. I'm sorry to say, but that's the way the cookie crumbles in these days. So, you can read in the Bible that Joseph begot Mary after Jesus was born as the firstborn, the child that opened, opened the womb, and the firstborn, as you can read in the Bible, is holy to God. Jesus was in that way holy to God, and he was his only begotten son, delivered by Mary. But the conception was by the Holy Ghost, by the Father himself. And after Jesus was born, she bore at least four other sons, James, Joseph, Simon and Judas. And the author continues even to say that sisters are also mentioned. The people of Nazareth said, quote, And his sisters... Are they not all with us? Unquote. In Matthew 13, verse 56. The word sisters is plural, of course. So we know that Jesus had at least two sisters. And probably even more. For this verse speaks of all his sisters. Usually, if we are referring to only two people, we would say both of them, not all of them. The implication is that at least three sisters are referred to. If we figure three sisters and four brothers, half-brothers and half-sisters of Jesus, because they had not the same father, that's the big distinction, half-brothers and half-sisters, this would make Mary the mother of eight children. The scriptures say, quote, Joseph knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Unquote. This is from Matthew 1, verse 25. Joseph, quote unquote, knew her not until after Jesus was born. But after that, Mary and Joseph did come together as husband and wife, and children were born to them. The idea that Joseph kept Mary as a virgin all her life, is clearly unscriptural. During the times of the falling away, that's the falling away of the early churches, as though to more closely identify Mary with the other goddess, some taught that Mary's body never saw corruption, that she bodily ascended into heaven and is now the queen of heaven. It was not until this present century, however, that the quote-unquote assumption of Mary was officially proclaimed as a doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church. It was in 1951 that Pope Pius XII proclaimed that Mary's body saw no corruption but was taken to heaven. The unbiblical and unscriptural words of St. Bernard sum up the Roman Catholic postillion. Quote, 
On the third day after Mary's death, when the apostles gathered around her tomb, they found it empty. The sacred body had been carried up to the celestial paradise. The grave had no power over one who was immaculate. But it was not enough that Mary should be received into the heaven. She had a dignity beyond the reach even of the highest of the archangels. Mary was to be crowned Queen of Heaven by the Eternal Father. She was to have a throne at her son's right hand. Now, day by day, hour by hour, she is praying for us, obtaining graces for us, preserving us from danger, shielding us from temptation, showering down blessings upon us. Unquote. All of these ideas about Mary are linked with the belief that she bodily ascended into heaven. But the Bible says absolutely nothing about the assumption of Mary. To the contrary, John chapter 3 verse 13 says, quote, No man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Unquote. Jesus himself. He is the one. He is the only one that is at God's right hand. He is the one. He is the only mediator. He is the one that showers down blessings upon us, not his mother. Closely connected with the idea of praying to Mary is an instrument called the rosary. It consists of a chain with 15 sets of small beads, each set marked off by one large bead. The ends of these chains are joined by a medal bearing the imprint of Mary. From, his hangs a sh from this hangs a short chain at the end of which is a crucifix. The beads on the rosary are for counting prayers, prayers that are repeated over and over and over. You know, that is called contemplative prayer. That is, Jesus condemned this tradition already when he says in Matthew 6, verse 5, quote, and following verses also, quote, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets and that may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seest in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth, what things you have need of before ye ask him. Unquote. That's a very powerful sermon. And later on in the same chapter, you can follow the Lord's Prayer. And when you don't have anything coming to your mind, but you want to do a prayer, then just say the Lord's Prayer. The author continues, the Catholic Encyclopedia says, quote, In almost all countries, then, we meet with something in the nature of prayer counters or rosary beads. Unquote. It goes on to cite a number of examples, including a sculpture of ancient Nineveh, mentioned by Layard, of two winged females praying before a sacred tree, each holding a rosary. For centuries, among the Mohammedans, a bead string consisting of 33, 66 or 99 beads has been used for counting the names of Allah. Marco Polo, in the 13th century, was surprised to find the king of Malabar using a rosary of, pre of precious stones to count his prayers. Saint Francis Xavier, remind you, Saint Francis Xavier, who is this? For the people who do not know, he was one of the founding members of the Society of Jesus with Ignatius of Loyola. And I am of that conviction that Pope Francis I did not take his name from Francis of Assisi, as he openly claims, but from Francis Xavier, who is a company, 
uh, who is a, a member of the uh, founding of the company of Jesus with the Vengeance Loyola. Saint Francis Xavier and his companions were equally astonished to see that rosaries were universally familiar to the Buddhists of Japan. Among the Phoenicians, a circle of beads resembling a rosary was used in the worship of Astarte, the mother goddess, about 800 before Christ. This rosary is seen on some early Phoenician coins. The Brahmins have from early times used rosaries with tens and hundreds of beads. The worshippers of Vishnu give their children rosaries of 108 beads. A similar rosary is used by millions of Buddhists in India and Tibet. The worshipper of Siva uses a rosary upon which he repeats, if possible, all 1,008 names of his God. The most often repeated prayer and the main prayer of the rosary is the quote-unquote Hail Mary, which is as follows. And I'm sorry, I have to read this to you, but keep in mind it's not biblical. It's a not a biblical prayer, it's pagan all the way. But I have to read it here to get it that, 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 that you know it, that you understand this. Quote, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of death. Amen. Unquote. The Catholic Encyclopedia says, quote, There is little or no trace of the Hail Mary as an accepted devotional formula before about 1050 AD. Unquote. The complete rosary involves repeating the Hail Mary 53 times, the Lord's Prayer 6 times, 5 mysteries, 5 meditations on the mysteries, 5 glory bees and the Apostles' Creed. Notice that the prayer to Mary is repeated almost nine times as often as the Lord's Prayer. Is a prayer composed by men and directed to Mary nine times as important or effective as the prayer taught by Jesus and directed to God? Ask yourself this. Is a prayer composed by men? Because it is, as I told you, unbiblical what I just read this Mary prayer, is a prayer composed by men and directed to Mary nine times as important or effective as the prayer taught by Jesus and which is directed to God? Ask yourself this and answer that for yourselves. Those who worship the goddess Diana repeated the religious phrase over and over, quote, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians! Unquote. And this we can read in Acts chapter 19, verse 34. Jesus spoke of repetitious prayer as being a practice of the heathen. Quote, when ye pray, he said, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. As I mentioned before, and you can go to Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 through 13 to confirm. In this passage, Jesus plainly told his followers. Now, I have to interject here. He told his followers at that time, and he tells us, through the Bible, the same today. Because God's words never change. He is the same as yesterday, as today, as forever and ever, even forever. In this passage, Jesus plainly told his followers, Are you a follower of Jesus, or are you a follower of man? In this passage, Jesus plainly told his followers, Not to pray a little prayer over and over. It is significant that right after giving this warning, in the very next verse he said, quote, After this manner therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, point, 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 unquote. 
here comes the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. Yet, Roman Catholics are taught to pray this prayer over and over. If this prayer was not to be repeated over and over, how much less a little man made prayer to Mary. If this prayer was not to be repeated over and over, how much less a little man made prayer to Mary. Okay, I'm finished with chapter 3 of Babylon Mystery Religion, dealing all about SUN sun worship, and I'm looking forward to our next chapter 4, that reads Saints, Saints Day and SUN Sun Worship Symbols. And as we go to the end of the year 2015 and approach the so-called holidays, holy days, Christmas and every these all of these pagan days that are coming up, these pagan feast days, holy days, I think chapter 4 will certainly make a point. So, thank you all for listening. Hope to see you next time. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Leave your messages and your comments in the description box, but make sure that they are made with spiritual discernment, that you are spiritually honest, and don't come to me and cite other Bibles than the King James Version. I don't even go into that anymore. I have learned enough in that regard and I've made up my mind I pledge my allegiance to my Lord who saved his words and preserved his words in the authorized version the 1611 King James Bible thank you for listening thank you for watching the video until next time God bless you and bye bye